What's up, guys? Rick here with your betting and one and done preview for this week's 3M Open. This is where I'll go through uh, outright, see if there is any value via the tournament predictor tool where I simulate the event 1,000 times. We'll look at head to head matchups and we'll see if there are some good options for one and done this week. Of course, there is a Wednesday live chat, 3 p.m. Eastern time on the Rick Run Good YouTube channel for all your final questions, answers, ownership, whatever you want. Then we have have the uh, 8.15 p.m. Eastern time. That is your jock market power hour. That is uh, all things jock market where Joe Idoni and myself take you through uh, the most critical moments of that IPO phase. And then, of course, there is a Friday cut sweat show tentatively scheduled uh, for 4 p.m. Eastern time. On Friday, make sure that you are uh, getting notified when I do go live because that time is subject to change. Okay, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. All right, I had a little issue with the uh, the regular tournament predictor tool uh, this week, but the data, I was able to whip up this this tool instead. The data is still accurate. These are still all the right information. It just looks a little bit different. So um, I'll make sure to uh, figure out what was going on and, and fix that. But here's, here's what we have now. Essentially, I've got my simulation results. Remember, this has been simmed uh, 1,000 times. And then it, comparing it to uh, not only one place's odds, but now I can compare it to DraftKings, BetMGM, FanDuel, PointsBet, and William Hill because I know not all of you have access to uh, every single book. And also, it's nice to compare the odds across the board. So the way this looks... Dustin Johnson, no surprise, won 11.6% of my simulations. It was the most of anybody in this field. Now, this is a situation where I say this a lot. You know, it's like, do you want to bet a guy at eight, seven and a half, eight to one, something like that? It's it's tough to do. Uh, however, if you're just looking for a sweat, if you're looking for someone to be involved on a Sunday, here's your most likely candidate. And I do like the way that he's trending. I don't know if he will end up making my final card, but if I'm going to take anybody at the top, it's it's probably going to be Dustin Johnson. Uh, Louis Oosthuizen won 7.7% of my sims. Of course, that does not take into account the fact that he was, you know, basically wire to wire in the sweat last week at the Open Championship. Now has to fly back. I do have concerns about that. But what I like about this this tool that I whipped together is if you see this here. So Louie at DraftKings is 11 to 1, but he's 15 to 1 at FanDuel. So he is actually winning less than he needs to be to bet at DraftKings. But if you get the number at FanDuel, it's actually the better value and you can bet it. It's kind of interesting to look at it like this, even just a couple of points. If you just blindly follow the simulations, a uh, huge difference between him being a value at one book and him not being a value at another. And it's only you know, four points, but it's actually a lot. It implies, it implies a completely different rate of him winning. Louis, uh, after Louis, Tony Finau wins at 6.7%. Patrick Reed wins at 5.09. Cameron Tringali at 3.7. So there is a pretty significant drop off from the four guys at the top down to the rest of the field. I kind of like starting my card in the Bubba range, you know, Bubba 30 to one, 35 to one over at DraftKings, William Hill, 40 to one. Uh, that's the best number available on him. That's where he is the most valuable. If you go to rickrungood.com slash bets, there is probably a free offer on William Hill for you, depending on what state you're in. But that's the best number that Bubba has. And I mean, he'd been playing well and, you know, he misses out on the open championship uh, because of contact tracing. And I, I mean, as far as I'm aware, did not even test positive himself. So you wonder if he is fresh and ready to rock and roll this week. Uh, Cam Davis at uh, 40 to one at drafts Kings, 40 to one at points bet. I'm not afraid to run this back out there. You know, he is uh, TPC twin cities. I don't think has much of an identity outside. And I, and I don't mean that as a true knock, right? I mean, it just, there's not a, there's, it's not so unique that there's only certain skill sets that can win there. And there is certainly water lurking off a lot of tee shots. It's going to come into play on a lot of second shots as well. You can get a little bit off and be in trouble, but Cam Davis just won a couple of weeks ago, uh, playing well, have loved his game and, and still sitting at 40 to one in this field, um, is interesting. So I don't mind that one single bit. 
you know, Mav McNeely is interesting from a, from a perspective of he's the he's this guy where I, I start to do these these mental gymnastics, these mental Olympics, where I like the way he's trending. He is his advanced metrics are uh, better than they've ever been in his young career. Can he actually win this golf tournament? I don't know the answer to that. You know, you start, but then I say, well. Uh, nobody wins until they win their first, right? And then they become a different type of player or, or, or we treat them differently. So it's it's this really awkward conversation and, and dilemma that I have with myself. Um, I will probably get McNeely in matchups. I'll probably get him in the top 10. I will probably... I'll probably bet him out, right? Who am I kidding? I will probably bet him out, right? But I'm, I'm curious about that. The other one that I'm pretty curious about, and this is just his fourth PGA Tour start, is Mito Pereira who is basically a value across the board for me. I have him winning this 1.5% of the time. I know that is not a lot, but the the model loves the fact that he's won on the Corn Ferry. That's huge. Not only once, not twice, but three times this season. I have him winning this event 1.5% of the time, which makes him a value at DraftKings. It makes him a value at FanDuel. It makes him a value at PointsBet. It makes him a value at William Hill. And it makes him a value, a big value at BetMGM. So like it, it, this is... Uh, one of the few guys who is across the board of value on the outright market because of that upside ball striking the heck out of it in his last two starts, getting more and more comfortable on the PGA tour. I'm really digging that uh, quite a bit. I was a little bit disappointed that Luke list lost or excuse me, only won 1.3% of my simulations. If I blindly follow that um, I couldn't bet him this week, but of course you shouldn't be blindly following anything back to back top five finishes. Uh, I do worry a little bit about the putter, of course, but he's been better in his last three starts uh, by a mile. Outside of that, I probably didn't go anywhere too far down the board here except for Cam Champ. Uh, Cam Champ at 150 to 1. And this is what I, I find this very interesting about Cam Champ. Uh, William Hill has him at 80. Points Bet has him at 100. FanDuel has him at 95. BetMGM has him at 125. DraftKings has him at 150. That to me says odds makers don't even know what to do with this guy, which is usually a good thing for us. Uh, the discrepancies across the board, the volatilities, the fluctuation, that's good for us. I know Cam Champs can say whatever he wants. He says he's playing the best golf of his life. He looked a lot better in the advanced metrics at the John Deere than any of his previous five starts, which were absolutely horrible. If he leans into the weapon, if he's a zero approach player, which is a thing I don't say often, and he's a zero putter, he's kind of live to contend in this thing with how good the driver is. Maybe he gets lucky a little bit here, gains a stroke on approach, gains a stroke putting, and now he's in the mix. He's won twice on the PGA Tour. He's a winner, 150 to 1. That is a number you should be shopping, and it's a number I've already invested in. All right, here is the head-to-head -head matchup tool on rickrungood.com. You can use any time frame, and you can put any two golfers against one another, and you can see the likelihood of them winning in a four-round matchup. I'm looking at DraftKings. There is a lot of Dustin Johnson matchups. You usually don't get you know, four or five from the same golfer. So let's just run through these very, very quickly here. Uh, Dustin Johnson, big favorite, minus 160 over Tony Finau. The time frame that I'm using is the start of 2021. DJ is 53% to win that, which is uh, not nearly enough to be able to bet. And in fact, Tony Finau, plus 130, um, would be the side you would probably want to bet here. It's close. It's probably a no bet. Let's go now to Louis. So this is DJ versus Louis. Louis just dominates him here. Now, again, this does not take into account, well, I mean, both these guys are coming back from the Open Championship. It doesn't consider that Louis was, you know, in the mix and probably exhausted. DJ could be as well. We have no idea. But just the start of 2021, Louis wins this four-round matchup 75% of the time. It's a huge number. Louis's been that good. Go look at his results. Go look at his strokes, gain stuff. He's been that good. Um, he is the dog on DraftKings. So that is certainly a bet. Uh, if, as, if you just kind of avoid the rest of that noise that's going on, but the metrics say that's a bet. And then the last one is against Patrick Reed, who again, I have as a favorite 56% over uh, at, at DraftKings. He is plus 130 against Dustin Johnson. So DJ is certainly, and I get it, it's driven by his outright number. We're starting to see trends for Dustin Johnson, but he's being he's seemingly being overvalued in in the in the matchup market. This one's kind of interesting. Hank Lebiota against Patton Kazire. These guys have been doing it two different ways. Uh Lebiota's been much more consistent. Kazire has been much more volatile. Let's see what the model says. 
small, tiny little edge to Pat and Kazire. I have him winning this 51% of the time. Uh, he is plus 100. Delibio is plus one or minus 120 on DraftKings, so that is probably a no bet. Let's do. What do we have here? Tringale versus Grillo. These are two guys catching a lot of steam this week. Cameron Tringale minus 130 over Grillo. Just my gut says, can that be right? Yeah, I guess it can be. I have him at minus 124. I have Tringale. So this is kind of right on with what DraftKings has issued. Probably a no bet. Let me see if I can find one more bet here before I move on. Louis over uh, DJ was one. I couldn't find a bet in the other ones. Let's do... This one's kind of interesting, too. Sergio and Bubba. They are both minus 110. So Sergio and Bubba. Oh, my gosh. I have Sergio winning this 75% of the time since the start of 2021. He's just been consistently better than Bubba Watson has. What about more? I guess more recently is not going to really help all that much. Wow. Wow. I have Sergio as a fairly significant favorite here. He's minus 110. So that would probably be the other bet that we would fire away on. Um, one and done update. The run good one and done. We are, I guess everybody's running out of events, but so are we. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, wait, I can't count. Six events left. That includes the tour championship. Don't, before you send me an email and say, what are the rules for the tour championship? Um, Check out the rules tab. They've been in there all season long. Yes, starting strokes matter, and um, the payouts are a percentage of the bonuses. So go check that out. Make sure you are up to date, and that is going to probably help your decision-making for the rest of the year because you should probably be saving somebody for the Tour Championship. And actually, we can kind of talk about that really quickly here because if you do have a... Um, if you do have a one and done that is going to the tour championship and it is using the starting strokes, you are so incredibly incentivized to find somebody who is going to start. Remember, Morikawa is going to start. So if, if it ended right now, Morikawa would be the number. Let me just show you this. Morikawa would be the number one player at the tour championship. He would start at 10 under. Jordan Spieth would start at eight under. But like having somebody who starts 30th, they're starting 10 shots back. It's it's so hard. You need somebody <clears throat> in the top five or six here. So it's incredibly important, especially if, if, if you're being scored that way. Um, the most likely candidate is uh, Harris English, someone that you might not have used, that you might be able to save, that you're not really eyeing for any event uh, that you could potentially use if he's, if he's, he's currently fifth. Um, if, if he could finish inside the top 10 heading into the tour championship, that would be very, very valuable. The other one is Louie. If you haven't used Louie yet, he's still currently in the top 10, but you really need to start considering who of these guys you're going to save because uh, your, your one and done might be really, really valuable and it might come down to that final event. For this week in particular, I think there's a couple of really good options. We talked about Tringale. He's been really, really good. Um, we've talked about a little bit about Emiliano Grillo, who... You know, we don't have the advanced metrics from the Open Championship last week, but he played well. He finished 12th. He's a popper. This is uh, a much better field for him than a lot of different places. I don't mind Grillo at all. I really don't mind Bubba, to be quite frank. You know, if you haven't used Bubba yet, um, he is uh, playing well. You know, back-to-back -to -back top 20s. Did not play the Open Championship, which you could argue is a benefit. Uh, most people have already used him. Uh, if you have not, I do not mind that one single bit. Outside of that, uh, I think you could get a little bit freaky with Mav McNeely, right? So McNeely has been on a pretty good stretch of golf. His advanced metrics show this as well, but four consecutive top 30 finishes with three of them being top 21s. This is by far the best stretch of golf that he has been in uh, in his career. I know that's a very young career, but I, I, don't, I don't mind that at all, especially at a place that... Listen, we, one, don't know a lot about it because there's not a lot of data. There is also, um, I, don't, I, don't think it, I don't think it is a course that really elicits a true fit. Uh, it's my opinion. I think a lot of different guys can, can have success there. And then I would round out my options with Luke List and Patton Kazire. You know, Luke List is coming off of back-to-back uh, -back top five finishes, playing well. The putter's been much better in his last three than 
in a long time. And then the other one would be Patton Kazire, who uh, has been flying. He, this is the volatile option. You know, he's been flying up the leaderboard on Sundays. He's got back to back top 25 finishes, didn't play the Open Championship. Um, th this to me is maybe where I'll go and try to just pick off a win. He's won on the PGA Tour before. I like that. I will probably go with Kazire here. That'll about do it. Let me know what you're going to do, who you're picking for this week. At Rick Run Good is where you can tweet me or you can comment below. Best of luck this week, and I'll talk to you guys soon.